Back on June 21st, 2004, Mike Melville performed a very simple experiment in his Spaceship One as he soared into space for the very first time. He released a pack of M&Ms into his cabin to show everyone that he was floating around in zero G. The question is, can we reproduce that same experiment here on Earth with a water rocket? Let's find out. Now we've actually tried this experiment about 10 years ago uh, with kind of mixed results and the camera wasn't all that good and was looking down the payload bay. But since we recently did the liquids in zero G experiment, we decided to modify the payload bay and then um, put in Skittles instead of M&Ms since uh, the Skittles hold up a lot better in the hot sun. Um, so let's have a look at that experiment. Since we expected the Skittles to fly up to the top of the payload bay and stay there, we added a spinning agitator that was going to help keep them moving to make it easier to see the microgravity. Now Mike had his hands to give them a nudge. Right, let's see it in action. We flew the experiment again on the fiberglass rocket so that we could lift a heavier payload. We also flew it with water only for maximum boost off the pad. Some birds up there. As you can see the skittles fly up shortly after burnout and pretty much stick to the top of the payload bay due to the drag on the rocket. Uh, right near Apogee you can see them wanting to float free when there is little drag on the rocket. The skittles on the bottom were just stuck to the double sided tape. Okay let's see that again. Now we repeated the experiment a couple of times with similar results. Here are the two flights side by side. Again you can see them just floating when we get close to Apogee. The agitator just wasn't giving them a strong enough push. After reviewing the footage, we decided to come back the following launch and try again, but this time with faster agitator running at about 60 RPM to help the Skittles move a little bit more. We also added foam to the water in the rocket so that we could prolong the transition from burnout to coasting, hoping to slow the Skittles a little on the way up. For these flights, we pressurized the rocket to 210 psi. Three, two, one, go! Here are the results from the two new flights. Shortly after burnout, the skittles fly up and if you look closely on the lowest skittles, you can see that they are floating free. After the rocket passes through Apogee and drag starts to increase, the skittles again settle against the top of the payload bay until the parachute opens. So not quite the cabin full of freely floating M&Ms like Mike had, uh, but at least a couple of seconds worth. So that's it from us from this week. Uh, following now is a short clip from the original experiment. And so if you'd like us to show you more of these flashback videos, um, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.